Well, hello all. All right, today we're going to be talking about how so many of the oil companies are no longer adhering to their pledges of climate change reduction, of reducing oil exploration, oil drilling, and, on, and anything to do with oil. They're throwing it away. A shell reversal on Wednesday. Shell Oil announced that it is raising payouts to wealthy shareholders and scrapping plans to cut oil production by up to 2% annually. This is a move that environmental groups said lays bare the futility of relying on fossil fuel corporations to voluntarily curb their climate destroying activities. Yeah, see it just it, it, it just does not hold any muster to try and get oil companies to, to slow down their drilling or stop their production. It just isn't going to happen. In a world of worsening climate extremes, a single red line has caught many people's attention. The North Atlantic Ocean has unprecedented warming to nearly 2 degrees Fahrenheit or 1.09 degrees Celsius, about the, uh, the, the mean temperature of the ocean. This dates back to 1982. Of course, underlying everything is human-caused climate change, said David Swan, climate scientist at UCLA. This is a long-term trend that greenhouse gases will continue to accumulate in the atmosphere. This will keep ocean temperatures off the charts for years to come. This will also continue to cause extreme heat all over the globe, including land and sea temperatures. And not only that, but it will continue to worsen the ice loss in both the Arctic and the Antarctic, and in Greenland. Basically, we have three Arctics, and those are them. And unfortunately, we're losing ice as fast as ever before in human history. And the climate is continuing to change. So there you have it. The problem is with oil companies. But are oil companies really at fault when all they're doing is offering a product that we as humans continue to buy and burn to get ourselves around? What have we done to try and mitigate using fossil fuels by reducing the amount of plastic we use or buy, reducing the amount of fuel that we use to move ourselves around? We could use public transportation. We could use electric vehicles of some sort, even though uh, gasoline and fossil fuels do make almost all vehicles of all kinds. Over time, these electric vehicles could pay for themselves on reducing our use of fossil fuels. It takes a lot less energy to move a little scooter or an electric bicycle around than it does a whole car or even a pickup truck or anything else. Look at your gas mileage and you can figure out how much fossil fuel you're taking to move yourself around. Nearly up to us. We can't rely on governments to do anything because governments just aren't going to do anything. They never have really done much and they're not going to do anything now, especially with all the corruption going on and all the fossil fuel money being paid to every politician regardless on what side of the aisle they're on. Whether they're on the left, the middle, or the right, they're all being paid by the fossil fuel industry and will continue to be paid by the fossil fuel industry because there's nothing illegal about it. The people in high office have made sure that getting bribes from all these corporations is perfectly legal through one loophole or another. They will always do this. So it's up to us to try and reduce our use of fossil fuel in any way we can. No matter what we do, we're going to burn energy and hopefully it will use less energy by what we eat, how we move ourselves, and what we use by at cheap box stores. Stay away from cheap box stores because most everything at those locations use plastic in one way or another and is meant to be thrown away quickly so that you have to go buy more plastic items that will then need to be thrown away and rebought. So with that, I appreciate any comments you guys have, any ups, and any new subscribers. And until next time.